All right, guys, welcome back to another quick car talk in this very cold day. Just got done shooting some video of football out in the snow. So I also wanted to take this opportunity on the way back to address some of your questions. A while ago, I posted a short talking about someone asked me if 16 gigs of RAM was enough for After Effects. And I do think 16 gigs of RAM is enough for After Effects. What has stemmed from that is a flood of questions about very specific computer stats. And so I'm not really here to talk about too much about specific computer stats in terms of After Effects. But what I am going to answer is what I recommend for After Effects and just a general motion graphics setup uh, for your computer. A lot of people are asking questions about laptops and RAM and all this different stuff. And if you need a very specific purpose or you have a very specific question, there's lots of benchmarks out there that people have done to figure out what the optimal After Effects setup is. So I think in terms of After Effects and specs, it's gonna vary for a lot of people, right? So I wanted to make this video not to talk about the perfect amount of specs, whether it's an i7 or i5 or eight gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM. This is just an overall opinion of getting into motion graphics, using After Effects, and what kind of machine would work whether it's a laptop or a desktop. So I will state off the bat, a lot of the questions I got were about Mac laptops, whether it was the Pro or the Air or whatever laptop they have out nowadays. And I've been really honest with this, answering this question with other people and honest with the fact that I am extremely biased towards PC. And the reason I like PC is because I like Nvidia graphics cards and I like being able to choose my parts and I do like to be able to upgrade over time if need be. And the reason I wanted to state that out front is because some of the questions I was getting, and there's nothing wrong with this, right? Because everyone has a certain budget. They want to, everyone has a certain amount of money they want to spend on gear. And the reason I'm talking about PC versus Mac is if you are on a tight budget, but you do know you need a machine for editing or for work or for After Effects, or if you're just budget friendly or just budget conscious, like you don't want to overspend, your money will always go further with a PC setup than it will with a Mac. And that's just, that's just a fact of how it is. If you, if you spec out a $7,000 MacBook Air or whatever they're up to now, not only does it not have a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card, which everything is still really going NVIDIA heavy, but if you take that same $7,000 budget and you start pricing out whether it's a PC laptop or a PC desktop, you'll quickly find that the specs between the two, the PC is just going to go way further. And again, these are all just my personal opinion. If you like the operating system and it means that much for you that you're going to pay that premium for the operating system, then that's your prerogative. And I say go for it. So with that out of the way, this is my philosophy when it comes to buying computer parts or editing machine is I'm just a big believer that you should buy as much power as you can possibly afford or you feel comfortable with paying for at the time. Especially when it comes to PC parts, everything is always upgrading and changing and you can't really get hung up on, oh, well, my graphics card might become obsolete in six months. It's like, well, yeah, of course it is. So, but it's not a big deal. If you, if you go with the PC and you get a really good strong foundation, you can upgrade and pick and choose parts as time goes on. You don't have to have everything all at once, but just having the, the option to even do that is a really powerful thing. So you're constantly being able to upgrade that. So like I said, I recommend trying to buy as much power as you can afford comfortably in the moment. The next step with that is everyone's always asking me, oh, is eight gigs of RAM enough? Is four gigs of RAM enough? Is you know, I have 64 gigs, is that enough? And it's like, well, After Effects and all these graphics software, they all use different parts, right? They're all, they're all working together. Your CPU is important, your RAM's important, your GPU is important, and they're all kind of working together. So kind of the answer for all the people that are asking me, oh, is eight gigs of RAM enough and all this? It's like, you can get After Effects to work on four gigs of RAM, you can get After Effects to work on a 128 gigs of RAM or one terabyte of RAM, whatever you might have. The thing is, is when you're working in After Effects, 
you know, using the software, animating the layers, doing compositing. If you have a small amount of RAM or you have, you know, a not very powerful GPU, you're going to be able to use it. You're going to get going. It's just going to be very, very slow. And it's going to be slow to work with. It's going to be extremely slow when it comes to rendering. But if you have time on your hand, like if, if time is on your side, then yeah, don't worry about that. You, you have different resolutions that you can work in in After Effects. So if you're working, you know, in a 1920 by 1080 composition, you can switch that to half resolution. And now you're working at half of that 960 or whatever it is, you know, half of that. And if your PC still can't handle that, okay, you drop it down to a quarter resolution and it's freeing up resources. And you may not have the easiest, cleanest image to look at and work with because quarter resolution is you're really starting to downsample your previews a lot. But that's not the question. The question I get asked is, can After Effects work with eight gigs of RAM? It's like, yeah, drop it down to a quarter resolution. It'll totally work. It's just going to be very difficult to work with. And you're going to have to be squinting a lot and looking at all the pixels while you're working in quarter resolution. And then when you work and do all your things and you go to render, a fast machine might render your animation. Your, your, let's say you have a one minute animation. It could have crazy effects. It could have, you know, noise, grain, whatever, all the things that slow down the, the computer. It's like, yeah, it's going to render it. It might, it might take your machine, if it has low power, three hours. Whereas if you had a high-end desktop PC, it could take it five minutes. Again, if time is on your side and it means nothing, then yeah, you can totally get away with a low-end machine and I keep going back to the PC part of it, you can upgrade that PC over time and start to make things uh, faster as you work. You don't have to drop all seven grand into a MacBook that you're never going to be upgrade, be able to upgrade. And it's a, you know, it's a pricey commitment for the lack of power. Just again, my bias is very towards PC. And that's just, you know, that's just kind of how I've, operated switching from Mac a long time ago. So I'm going to post this response to that question that has a lot of people asking. Hopefully you guys see this video. And for anyone asking about PCs and, and specs and RAM, I hope this kind of helps answer that a little bit. It's very surface level and I understand that. So if you guys want to follow up to this video, if you're thinking about buying something and that helps you, you know, purchase what you want next for your PC or laptop, um, yeah, I just hope this helps out. Hope that answers some of those questions. And again, if I need to elaborate or you have any more questions like this, feel free to reach out and comment and I'll try to make another video like this if it helps out. So yeah, thanks again, guys, for all the questions and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Whoa, this doesn't look good. Oh, this is going to be so bumpy. Oh my gosh. I got bamboozled into a one-way road. <laughs>